Hello, hello. This is a great thumbnail. Thank you, dear. I like to use it all over. Well, let me know if you guys can hear us. I'm trying to double check myself. Double check yourself, please. Oh, I'm getting an ad on my own channel. Isn't that great? Let's see. Okay. Perfect. Okay, looks like our audio is coming through. Welcome, welcome, or welcome back to Living in the Pacific Northwest with Hal Bird. I'm Hal Bird. I'm a licensed realtor and relocation specialist and certified in ESP luxury and licensed in Oregon and Washington. Did I say that already? Yeah. And I'm here to help people who have questions about relocating. And together, my husband and I run a business called Bird's Eye Relocation. Where were you at when I was moving a few years ago? You know, I didn't exist yet. Uh, not in this, not in this iteration, at least. Um, okay, so today we're going to be talking about water quality. If you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. Make sure you are subscribed. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I noticed I was watching a YouTube video this week, yeah. and when the person said subscribe, the whole subscribe button, mm -hmm. it like within the YouTube app, like like illuminated. It oh. was really cool. And it did Do we make have me a thing where I see where you put your thumb up and it shoots a little heart, a little uh, thumb. <laughs> Do we have that? I don't know. You go You're going to have to watch the replay. There you go. Oh, boy. This is Gen X for you. I'm Gen X? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you okay. got to have fun. <laughs> this is the millennial heart. Uh -huh. See how pretty that is? Uh -huh. And then this is the Gen Z heart. <laughs> Sorry, <What>? Gen Z. <laughs> I heard that's a gang sign, too. So that's not... Wow. Don't like it. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Anywho, so that's enough shenanigans. Although, <laughs> I heard this joke that said, if you let someone shenan once, they're going to shenan again. <laughs> <laughs> You're so easily entertained. It's almost... <sighs> bless your heart, as I used to say. Bless your heart. Okay. We're How you guys doing today? I'm giggly start. We like to have fun, you know, in this crazy world of ours. And uh, today is a particularly uh, serious topic, um, yeah. one that actually led us to our relocation in the to the Northwest, and one that we are starting to get more and more from folks as they reach out with uh, interest about relocating from other states or from either e even other countries. And that is the uh, subject of, uh, I guess, water availability and water quality. Yeah. So today we're focusing on water quality. We have stats to share with you, resources, links. I will put them in the description at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're going to talk about the three main cities that I sell in. Mm -hmm. So Vancouver, Camas, Ridgefield are the three most... On the Washington side. Yeah. On the three most popular cities that people are moving to. Um, so I'd probably say like my clients, like Vancouver's number one, then Camas, Ridgefield, Washubel, and then Battleground in terms of actual cities within Southwest Washington. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to cover the most common three that people are moving to. Um, and I guess we'll start it off by saying it's not... Um, it's a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I was going to say it could, be, it could be worse, but it's still not great or something like that. I'm so bad at idioms, you guys. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. I was on a call with a client last night and I was like, sorry. Um... So okay. when you say it's not great, what are we referring to? Um, well, there's a couple things about water quality in Vancouver um, or in Southwest Washington that I think are concerning to people who care about things. And I, I guess I would um, give it, I would contextualize it by saying that Washington State's standards in terms of water qualities are higher than the federal. Correct. And so a lot of places you might be moving from, maybe it's Texas, Hawaii, I don't know if California is more stringent or not, but it um, could be North Carolina, Florida, your state might not even be testing for the same things that we're testing for in Washington, which is how we found what I think is the most concerning. And the reason that we wanted to create this video was because we met up with some people from Hawaii um, who are relocating at the end of summer, and they were asking us about the water quality. and. At the time, the only thing I could really say was that years ago when we first moved here, we met someone from 
uh, the city water and they said, oh, we just had our water quality report. Everything was so great. This is probably going back to 2018, 2019. Yeah. Um, and so we were like, you know what? That's a really good question. Let's go find out what the answer to it is and then share it with all of you kind folks on here. Mm-hmm. So do you want to kick it off? Uh, I'll follow your lead. So let's jump over to it. So and we're sharing the screen with the yeah. folks watching? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, so first, there, I guess we need to specify that there is the city of Vancouver, mm-hmm. and then there's unincorporated Vancouver. And if I go over to the Vancouver Water Quality Report, they haven't released the 2023 one yet. Um, this is the area, let's see if I'm zooming in properly where you can see it. Can I do that? Can you see it? Mm, let's go down a little. There we go. That's good. So here's where you can see where the city of Vancouver supplies water, which is actually larger than the city limits. Um, I should probably have the city limits pulled up. And so some parts of this area, like basically around where um, SR State Route 500 is, um, kind of in the middle of the A, if you will. Our freeways kind of make an A, you know, I-5, 205, Highway 500, and then at the bottom you've got Highway 14. Um, those are the main highways in Vancouver. So anything that's really like north of SR 500, except around the Van Mall area, and then north of um, Fourth Plain Boulevard, like going into Orchards on the very northeast side of this map you're seeing, is technically unincorporated Vancouver, but it's still serviced by City of Vancouver water. Right. Utility. Um, so the City of Vancouver gets us water from... Uh, wells and aquifers that are in the orchards area, Troutdale, which is in Oregon, and sand and gravel aquifers. I don't know where those are. Um, So I guess you can read for yourself what it is. Um, So there's limits to what can be in the water. Um, So I guess we're just jumping right in where we have, let's go back up. So here's the water quality summary in terms of like the required testing for the groundwater. So you can see like there's fluoride, highest level detected is 1.5 parts per million, highest allowed is four, Mm -hmm. and the lowest level detected was 0.4. And this comes from (laughs) erosion of natural deposits and then an additive for strong teeth. Mm -hmm. Nitrate um, comes from fertilizers, animal waste, sewage. Um, That was also below the highest level that's allowed. Coliform, uh, same thing, less than 5% positive, and the highest level detected there was 0.7, which is great. By the way, if you are buying a property that is rural and you're on a well, not that you have to be rural to be on a well, but just usually in our area, if you're closer in, you're usually not on a well. And um, you want to make sure to get this water test. Do you have the water test? So you want to make sure to get the test. If you are a veteran, the VA will require this. It's a lender-required test. Um, Not this one. This one is actually um, a past potential client of mine who was a realtor in New York put me onto this company that tests all of the things that you're seeing here and like a bajillion other things. It's just the most detailed type of water test you can get. I think that runs about just under $200. It is... The time frame, the timeline for it to get the results back is too long when you're under contract. Yeah. It usually takes longer than 30 days. Um, but if it's something that you wanted just for your personal knowledge to decide if you wanted to get a water softener, if you wanted to add whole house filtration or something like that, or even just a lot of people get the under sink filtration systems, uh, that might be a good thing to, to purchase. And ultraviolet filtration is becoming more and more popular too. Is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Hmm. Um, so we're looking at the Vancouver, let's see, required testing within the distribution system. So you can pretty much see everything is within the allowable range. Uh, copper, pH, highest level detected, pH level allowed. I'm guessing that's neutral. Not very sciencey. Uh, how much additional frequent, frequently requested information is how much... Oh, this is good. How much hardness? Highest level detected, 148. Lowest level was 81, which is still pretty hard. 
uh, I was reading a Reddit uh, forum about Vancouver versus Portland, and I guess you had already known this, that Portland's water is actually a lot softer than Vancouver's water. Um, I wish it was the other way around, but you know. Yes. Portland actually goes through pretty extensive lengths to, uh, to treat and, and uh, you know, basically pay attention to their water quality mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, health cleanliness. Yeah, I heard that some of the water that, um, some, both in Vancouver and in Portland, some of the water that's coming out is practically untreated because it's so clean and fresh. Like, the deeper the mm-hmm. aquifer is, like, um, under Vancouver Lake, apparently they have some uh, water sourcing there. And um, those, that one hardly needs to be treated. The other thing I want to show you is, is it here? No. No. Oh, here. So here's a map of the major surface water because depending on the time of year, so when it's winter and there's less demand for water and it's also, there's more rain, the county pulls from, and when I say the county, I mean Clark PUD. So a little bit of background on our utilities. We all have the same electric company, which is Clark Public Utilities for Electric in Southwest Washington. And if you live in an area where you do not have municipal provided water, so specifically if you live in unincorporated Vancouver, for instance, um, then you get your water from the electric company as well. And so they switch back and forth depending on the availability. And so you can see from this map where the water is. And I thought this was really cool coming from California because where we last lived, which is in the like Winchester, Murrieta, Temecula area, um, do we even know where was the closest water? Like Hemet, that lake that they have dammed? Yeah, but I think what alarmed us was that the water supply was actually like all packed dependent in from, from other states. Yeah. You know. Um, so it's kind of cool to see. So we have Vancouver Lake. You can see this green section here at the bottom. And then you have the Columbia Slope. Then as you move north, you've got, I think this is Burnt Bridge Creek. Yeah, Burnt Bridge Creek. And then from there, going into more unincorporated Vancouver, Salmon Creek, Orchards, Five Corners, Barberton, Mount Vista, Brush Prairie. Where else? all the unincorporated areas. And you can see all these dark lines are actually the city limits. So when I was showing you the area before, hmm. this is actually outdated though, because the city limits right here around at, um, 500 actually goes north because it encompasses, there's like a little piece here, a little pie piece here that's now in the city because that's where Costco is. Right. Thank you. Well, <laughs> city of Vancouver pieces. gets that tax revenue. Um, so we have Salmon Creek here, and then you've got Whipple Creek going north. What is this green one? Oh, That's, Gee Creek. Mm-hmm. Richfield. Flume Creek. So you can see, like, all the water that we have. The Lewis River's going through here. We've got the, as you go, like, east, you've got Lackamas Lake. You've got the Washougal River. You've got the Little Washougal River. You've got Lake Merwin, Yale Lake. Like, all this water that we're surrounded by, not even to mention the Columbia River, so that was one of the things that if you go watch the video that's called Our Journey to Vancouver, um, we talk about one of the reasons that we wanted to leave California. Jared's not originally from there. I grew up there. And we just started looking around and being like, if anything goes wrong here, like if something falls out of whack, if there's too much fire, if there's, you know, we could run out of water, like it could be anything. Anything basically like what we saw when the it- boat runs into a bridge. Any, any kind of occurrence, freak or otherwise, yeah, uh, it just kind of uh, sketches out to, f- to figure, to have such a, a thin margin yeah. um, of something as, as essential as water. Extreme heat, Extreme. lack of water. Yeah. I mean, when we left, the state was in like a 10-year drought. They've been getting a lot of water the past mm-hmm. year or so. But um, So for us, seeing all this water that we're surrounded by was very reassuring when it came to moving here and just having access to natural resources. So as we move away from the city of Vancouver and we move towards the county water, Clark PUD, you can see they have four aquifers that are the source of the water here. And then there's a cross section of hydrogeologic structures. We're not gonna get into that today. Um, and like I said, I'll provide all the stats here. So you can see the average annual use per residential customer, 80,000 gallons. Wow. Clark Public Utilities has 35 wells, which have a pumping capacity of 35 million gallons of water per day. 
stored in 33 reservoirs. 80,000 uh, gallons. I've got to think I'm a lot less than that. But per residential customers, like per, per household, household that right? That still seems like a ridiculous amount of water. Yeah. But when I see how you, you know, shower and wash your hair, I can believe it. Hey. I <laughs> where is the file that shows where... Do I have it in here? No. Okay, we'll get there. Um, Just if you don't mind, in the comments, if you guys are watching this either live or recorded, thank you. Um, and in the comments, share if if water is a concern for you and, and your household and family, and also if, if there are any water saving measures that you employ, you know, in your daily life. One of the things that we share, hopefully you don't mind me. I do mind. Do you really? I do mind. I thought people would like to know. No, I do mind. <laughs> Well, reach out. I'll tell you offline. <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay. People love you because you're so yeah, candid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can find out about the drinking water and wells here. Um, this is on the county website. Um, this is an older report, so this is not as relevant, but I liked sh showing you the map. Now, the part that we alluded to in the beginning that I think is more concerning has to do with forever chemicals, which have been found, um, as far as we know, in the city of Vancouver and also the city of Camas. Mm -hmm. And Richfield, actually, I was reading on their website just before we started, they're not required to test for this until, I think, August of this year, but they're starting now. Oh, I was I thought you were going to say it doesn't have any, and I was like, that's it, I'm moving to well, Richfield. Well, they're expecting not to have any, <laughs> but they don't test for it. So that we're talking about the PFASs. Does that have to do with the size of the city? Why weren't they required to test for it? We'll have to find out in a future We're episode. going to the city council meeting tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll boycott until we get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Uh, City of Vancouver found that three of its water stations exceeded the state levels for PFAs. Again, that's higher than the federal levels. Um, and what do I want to share with you guys out of this one? Washington's drinking levels adopted in 2021 regulate five types of PSA and provide guidance for how much water a user can consume over a lifetime and not suffer adverse health effects. And... Um, I guess I'm not going to get political. I'm going to keep it very uh, neutral, but I would probably say that whatever the government says of, that we can tolerate, I'd prefer to have less of it personally. Um, so they talked about which water stations it was. I'm not really sure what the city is doing to fix it. Now, Camus is a little bit different because they're trying to locate where it's coming from. Um... Consultants for the city estimate it would cost $172 million to install treatment systems for Vancouver wells that have exceeded the state action levels. That's lovely. Um, in March, the EPA proposed a federal drinking water limit for both PFOAs and PFOs, which or PFOS, which is lower than Washington's current action level. If passed, Vancouver would be required to install treatment systems at eight of the nine well fields, raising capital costs from 172 million, I'm guessing that's for the three, mm -hmm. to upward of 280 to 300 million. City and county officials urge residents to educate themselves on PF, PFAs, shouldn't it be a lower S or PFAS, before jumping to conclusions. Do with that what you will. And then same thing here, forever chemicals found in Camas water. City takes impacted well 13 offline, seeks long-term solution. So they city did take it off. City of Camas detected harmful levels of forever chemicals in the drinking water system, and they sent out a notice. We never received a notice, but we're not on city water. We're on county water. Um the city's other wells are not close to exceeding recommended PFAS levels. I think it's PFAs. Like, I think it should be a lowercase s. Anyhow. Um, because they don't naturally break down, and they're also water-soluble, from what I heard. So they, they actually, the PFAs actually prefer to be in water. Mm -hmm. It actually, like, preserves them even more. Mm -hmm. Which is, Sounds good. again, just lovely. Um, same thing here. So that's what's kind of going on with our water supply. What do I have? This is for the county. No, this is Richfield. So moving up to Richfield. So we covered Vancouver. Vancouver. Un unincorporated. Unincorporated. Camus. Camus. 
at least what's going wrong there. And then the city of Ridgefield, which thank you for letting me know, they don't aren't required to test right now. For just for forever chemicals. So we can see some of their um, levels, you know, regulated in the distribution system. So you could compare this against Vancouver if this is a big deal for you, or just look to install a treatment system in your own home. Um, let's see. So everything looks like it's within range. The arsenic, fluoride, they actually have a very low level of fluoride. I think that uh, the city of Vancouver's was like a, more than three times higher than that, if mm. I'm remembering correctly. Um, chlorine, calcium, hardness levels, about the same as the city of Vancouver. Lead is much lower. 90th percentile tie. I th I mean, who are they comparing that to? The rest of the state. Oh. Copper. And then they have a whole glossary here. So I'm going to link all these, all the water quality reports that we have. And all the websites for each municipality. Just as you're looking at your home, you can do more research. I think one of the biggest things people don't realize when they're purchasing a home is that a lot of the due diligence falls on you as the consumer and you want to work with an agent who knows number one what's important to you what research is important to you so if you want to know like one of the things I'm always looking at for my clients is especially with new construction who owns the land behind the development you're building because you might think you're buying green space come to find out it's actually owned by a developer I can't tell you how many times people are like oh this is so beautiful like in the builder's rep is is, um, yeah, you know, we can't guarantee, but, you know, right now you have green space, and I'm like, it's already owned by a developer. You know, they may have already started the permit process. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just, there's little things like that that I think are important. Um, and a builder's rep, I guess, contractually is not obligated to you, the buyer, to tell you these things, right? Mm -hmm. Because it goes against their clients, the builder's best interest. Mm -hmm. They do owe you um, honesty, like mm -hmm. as a customer. So anyone you're dealing with, when you deal with someone in a client relationship, I have my highest fidu I am a fiduciary for you. I cannot do anything that is outside of your um, benefit. You know that that's going to work against you. Whereas if the builder tells me something that would help you, I have no obligation. I have no fiduciary obligation to the builder. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes the same thing with the builder's rep. So you never want to tell a builder's rep um, what you're willing to pay or. You don't want to negotiate with them directly because anything that you say can and will be used against you in the benefit of the builder. So you want to make sure you're working with your own agent to ensure that whether it's water quality or the neighboring property, if it's sold, who owns it, or um, things is it like, protected? Uh, not to cut you off, but even things like uh, overhead power lines, right? Like, mm -hmm. like those are some of the, the concerns that people have. I'm not, or underground how, gas lines. How close am I to an underground gas pipeline or overhead power lines? You know, yeah. uh, there's just, there's so many considerations that, um, you know, you can make mm -hmm. that, you know, to me, hiring hiring the right professional is, uh, is to me, is, is a no-brainer. It's crucial. Yeah. And I mean, I've told, I've told, there's a very high-end, very popular community in Clark County um, I won't say it publicly, but if you're interested or if you're looking at that community, I will tell you um, that if you don't, I personally, because we looked at a house and this is how I went down a rabbit hole, was next to the underground pipeline that is the Northwest Pipeline that pipes all of the natural gas for the Northwest. And it runs through Clark County in a couple of places. And we were very close to putting an offer in on a house and I had to do some serious digging to find out because I happened to see going back to what I look up. I looked up who owns these neighboring properties. Like, and especially when it's vacant land, when, if it's a house, it doesn't matter to me whether an LLC owns it, whether a trust owns it, if it's an individual, if the existing house is there for me personally, that might matter for you. But for me personally, I'm good. I know it's a house. No big deal. Vacant land. I'm very skeptical. I want to know, what are the plans for that lot? And when I saw who owned the lot next to this house we were considering purchasing, um, that was a big red flag for me. And I dug deep. And now I know where the entire Northwest Pipeline runs, which is very difficult information to find because they don't really want you to know, and I understand why from a security standpoint, 
where the pipeline is. So, not to get on too much of a tangent, but you know that kind of stuff is relevant. So, are there what kind of risks are associated with living near a pipeline? For example, since you brought it up. Um. Well, the closer you live to one of the like tran- I don't know if it's called a transformer box, but like the pl- like the. I'm wondering. <laughs> it's not on silent. <laughs> Um, the closer you live to like the hub parts of it, I forget what the actual term is. Um, the junction box. No. Is that like the canooter valve of (laughs) gas pipelines? Um, there are chemicals that come out of there. So if you're, if you're not close to that, that's not as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But if you start looking up like in Washington, there was a, there was a pipeline explosion. Um, I don't remember if it killed anyone. This was in the nineties. Um, in Arizona, there was a person who the gas company had, or the, the pipeline, I shouldn't say the gas company. Hi, Mike. Um, did you ever get your questions answered about insurance? Um, let me know. He asked in Vancouver talk and in California. Uh, oh, that's <clears> his <throat> question. Yeah. Um, so there was a couple in, I want to say maybe like Arizona or somewhere like that. And the pipeline had an easement on the back of their property. They, they, they lived on a farm. It was rural property. They had acres and acres. And um, the pipeline exploded. Their house was 400 feet mm-hmm. away from the pipeline. And it killed the father and the daughter. Mm-hmm. And the mother survived. Uh, so I'm like, I don't want to be within at least four to 500 feet of, yeah, of a pipeline. Yeah. And like as a lot of things, especially I hate to say it in our country, a lot of the checks and balances are are not up to snuff. So as far as you know, checking the connections, checking yeah, well our infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure. So you know, makes it even more um, I think important and relevant to know. Um, AC said, "How do I find that information for my own property? If you email me, I will send you how to find it." Great question. Um. Yeah, do we have any other questions? I don't think so. No. Um, so we started with water, ended with, with gas. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I guess we could talk about our personal situation. So, like, we don't really drink tap water. That was one of the things I asked, well, do you guys drink the tap water? But I've never drank tap water. Like, I've always done Brita's or water filters. And right now we have a Berkey filter, which are now off the market. Um, but we have filters probably for the next, like, two years. So... Um, once we're done with that, we'll probably switch brands, but keep our canister. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what we do personally uses, for drinking uses water. A charcoal filtration in addition to fluoride filters. Yeah. So um, that, and then one of the things I'm looking into is whole house filtration. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, like uh, ultraviolet is becoming more and more mm-hmm. effective, and then also whole house water softener, which goes a long way to. Um, Improving quality of your water for, for your appliances, mm-hmm. your hair, shower, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we have shower filters on. So, I mean, you don't have to be, you don't have to be as extreme as we are because we pretty much filter all of the water. I heard you filtered a filter. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Julian says spring waters, spring water and filters are a must. Um, fun fact, I sold a property to a couple from San Diego. They moved up to Woodland and they bought an acre uh, that and they had a spring that ran under the property, and the original owners back in the 70s or 80s set up a well where they have a spring-fed well because the well emerges. It's an underground spring. It emerges on their property, and they got the water rights to it, which is like unheard of in Washington. And um, the first time that they made ice, <laughs> she sent me a photo of their like crystal clear ice because she couldn't believe it. Um, it's good stuff. They have, they have like, to me, one of the coolest setups. You I help, love you that. You do house. help people with a lot of cool setups. If I think about some of the cool properties, you know, there's some really, really cool stuff, especially if you're moving from elsewhere, you know, what you can find here, uh, whether it's a p- privacy, views, uh, space, land, mm-hmm. um, you know, just there's just some really interesting properties to be had. Back here, cool. Okay, we're back on. Um, so I think that's it. We could. What is here? I'm going back to my idiom. Shoot the breeze. (laughs) 
with you guys for a while. Um, but it's been about 30 minutes. We try to keep them short and to the point. If there are other subjects you'd like okay. us to cover, um, again, you know, we're making this video because of a question we got while we meet meeting mm -hmm. with a family in person. But feel free to, you know, put a comment on the channel. Mm -hmm. Let us know what, what questions that we can try to answer for you, get you inform, information on. AC said, our water is basically spring water in Vancouver. From aquifers. I guess. Yeah. I think Are you talking about Vancouver? Hmm? But I think, when I think spring water, I don't think about having, like, the PFAs in it or it being so hard. But maybe spring water is hard because you have natural minerals in right. it. There's a really great water delivery service, Spring Water here. I think it's called, I don't know, I'm totally forgetting it. Something H2O. Spring 2O or something like that. We looked into doing that, but decided against it, and we went up to Berkey, which is great. It doesn't taste like anything. Like, our water tastes like nothing, which I love. Springs come up from aquifers. A well is basically an artificial spring. Vancouver is mostly aquifer. Thank you for that. That makes sense. Springs rise from the aquifers, which is probably how my clients have that. There's an aquifer below, the spring mm -hmm. emerges. Spring, right. Springs cool. up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's the live for today. Let me know if you guys want to see other topics, if you want us to cover, cover other utilities. Um, if you are concerned about wildfires, we did release the oh, yeah. Colombian conversations about wildfires in Southwest Washington. Um, that video, I think, was one of the most important videos we've done on the channel. And not enough people have watched it, in my opinion. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. You don't even have to listen to me talk because it's everybody else talking. Oh, the experts. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, definitely a good subject. And uh, not, not the funnest subject, but... There's some really good tips in there for, for you as a homeowner, property owner, mm -hmm. um, and even something to pass on to your, your neighbors and community. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, we will catch you guys next time. Yep. Ciao. Ciao.